Hello, and welcome to our discussion today on COVID-19's impact on the data center infrastructure CapEx. I'm Erica Powelson with the Deloro Group, and this is one in a series of discussions we're doing on COVID-19's impact on various markets and industries. Joining me today is Baron Fung. He's a research director of the Deloro Group's Data Center Infrastructure and Connectivity Group. Baron has more than 15 years of experience in this industry, so he has seen a lot of things change through the years, um, but obviously COVID-19 is unique in all ways uh, for all of us. So Baron, let us know how you're going to discuss or what you're going to focus on in today's discussion. Hi, Erica. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Well, COVID-19 has definitely put the industry at its heels in terms of major supply chain, uh, disruptions and uh, supply shocks. In today's talk, I'll talk about how COVID-19 will impact spending on data center infrastructure on different customer segments, how the market has responded uh, to prior recessions and how it's re recovered. And I'll wrap up the discussion with an outlook of the top 10 cloud service providers in terms of their spending on CapEx uh, this year. Okay, great. And I think we're going to get started with some slides uh, that talk about uh, the impact based on customer segments. So let me get that started for us. So the Oro Group has defined these distinct customer segments uh, with unique data center deployment strategies. Uh, servers are usually the highest expenditure and they drive other areas of the data center, such as networking and other facilities equipment that provide cooling and power to the rack infrastructure. The tier one that is shown here are among the largest cloud service providers. These companies include Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Facebook. And each year, uh, each of these companies buy as many as a million servers a year. With some exceptions, demand among the tier one has generally been strong during these times as enterprises relies more on public cloud as they shift their workforce remotely. And as consumers increase their reliance on the web to fulfill their daily needs. Server expansion in this sector early this year had been robust, but some of the companies had also had to deal with some supply chain shortages for servers and other crucial components such as memory and processors. New data centers that are under construction have all been delayed due to uh, stay at home orders that we've heard. Then the next group, uh, the tier two and tier three cloud providers are made up of dozens of public cloud and content cloud companies. Generally, uh, companies that provide uh, B2B cloud services are doing better than those that are exposed to vertical industries, such as travel and hospitality that are facing stiff revenue growth headwinds. So they could uh, pause or decline spending uh, due to these various macro uncertainties. We also see that Q1 cloud service providers continue to gain momentum and take share away from the tier two and tier three as well. The telco segment is on track for long-term expansion as the operators continue with the deployment of 5G and introduce new services at edge, but data center and infrastructure upgrades and expansion may be delayed in the near term as uh, we see a shift to more strategic areas of the network to address recent surge in network traffic. Then the last two groups here, uh, the enterprise, uh, usually consist of small, medium enterprises could hit the brakes in IT investments as these companies seek to conserve capital and pause spending during these challenging times. On the longer term, demand should gradually recover, but could lag GDP recovery. Already, IT spending in the enterprise has been in decline for the last several years as portals continues to shift to cloud computing, given the flexibility and competitive pricing that the cloud offers. So the Euro Group has historical data that allows us to review how data center infrastructure investments reacted to the economic downturn in the early 2000s, and also during the Great Recession back in 2009. Something we have observed from our historical analysis is that revenue growth on servers, as you can see here, see here in the orange line, uh, uh, correlated fairly closely with GDP growth, as you can see in the green line. This correlation was fairly strong until around 2011 or so, 
when the enterprise drove the majority of the growth. For 2020, however, uh, I think GDP growth is still a moving target. But uh, given recent projection provided by the IMF, uh, they're suggesting that global GDP could drop by 3% or more, which are levels well below the prior two recessions. History suggests that the enterprise server market could see double digit declines based on this uh, analysis. But as cloud demand appears to be healthy this year, we expect the cloud to generate some upside growth opportunities to the overall data center infrastructure market. Okay, great. So, uh, Baron, in those prior recessions, how quickly did the markets recover? And how do you see those mar markets recovering now? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in those two recessions, the enterprise server market was had also recovered fairly quickly with economic recovery. But with expansion of the cloud market for the past decade, and the cloud being more and more um, as a deployment strategy for enterprises, I think that enterprise spending is going to lag overall market recovery. The cloud also tends to its own unique cycles of um, spending that could be decoupled from the overall economic growth. So in the next slide, I'll talk about my outlook for the data center capex for top 10 cloud providers and how much impact it would have on the overall market. So the top 10 cloud service providers, they're also often called the um, cloud hyperscalers. So these companies include the top four US, which I mentioned earlier, followed by the top three Chinese cloud providers, Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, and the top three tier two US cloud companies, which are IBM Cloud, Apple, and Oracle. Our research is centered on these top 10 companies since they make up nearly 35% of the worldwide capex on data center infrastructure and have their weight on the technology ecosystem and vendor landscape. Many of these companies are deploying equipment such as servers and networks such as that they have built in-house. These hyperscale cloud providers tend to spend in waves. Back in uh, 2018, we saw a strong surge in capacity expansion, followed by capacity digestion in the, in, the, in the last year, 2019. Since the second half of 2019, we actually saw an increase again in spending that marks another expansion cycle. So during the current expansion cycle, more than half of the spending is on servers, and less so on other equipment such as uh, networking equipment and facilities equipment. So based on how events have been unfolding so far, uh, data center capex for Amazon and Microsoft is projected to grow on uh, double digits in 2020. Uh, we saw a surge in public cloud as well as their content cloud business, their legacy business. Uh, which is seeing healthy demand and would require continued infrastructure investments. Google and Facebook, on the other hand, are highly exposed to advertising, and that is facing strong headwinds as enterprises cut marketing budgets in these tough times. We expect these two companies to lower their spending for the year, which would weigh down on the CapEx growth of the sector in the second half of 2020. The top three Chinese cloud companies mostly uh, contributed by uh, Alibaba and Tencent, are projected for strong growth in the second half as the Chinese economy continues to rebound. We could also see quite a bit of government stimulus uh, uh, that are injected to encourage spending in infrastructure overall. For the rest of the top 10, which are IBM and Apple, uh, they built up quite a bit of excess uh, capacity last year. So I'm expecting those two companies to drive another growth cycle uh, later this year. Oracle has also been on a growth phase as well, increasing their footprint of data center globally. So, Great, thanks, Baron. Um, we've also you know, got a lot of information that we're able to provide. Uh, Baron has included with this webinar, you can look on the attachment section and there will be links to articles and reports because there's much more to talk about than we can in just a few minutes. But if you had to just give a few key takeaway points, Baron, uh, for our viewers, what would those be? Yeah, sure. So to wrap things up, um, I think the impact and recovery of the IT market is really going to vary sector by sector. We're really in uncharted waters right now. But really, one thing that we're more clear about 
is the pronounced shift in IT spending from on-premise data centers to cloud. And this is a trend that has been ongoing for the last five years or so. Uh, we believe that COVID-19 may also accelerate the shift of enterprises uh, to move, move to cloud, given the flexibility and ease of deployment that the cloud has to offer. Okay, great, thanks. And for those of you um, who are viewing, you can go back to the slides, uh, find any of the information. Also, Baron has provided his contact information, email, phone, that sort of thing. So you can contact him directly that way or always find him via the Del Oro Group website. And thanks for joining us today. And we encourage you to look for our other webinars that are discussing how COVID-19 is impacting other markets uh, that you care about.